So, uh, in the last class we were talking about um, uh, cell source, right? So, we talked about uh, where the cells will be obtained and what type of cells we can get and so on. Because when you are talking about tissue engineering, uh, cells are the <coughs> second aspect of the triad. And um, during that time I also said the cells which we get uh, would also have to be cultured. So, there are different aspects to it. So, uh, we identified what could be the source and what type of cells we could use, but um, we should also know how to actually separate these cells, uh, how to actually get these cells from the tissues and how to get the specific cell type from the tissue because the tissue is going to have multiple cell types. So, we need to be able to isolate the specific cell type which we are interested in. So, that is one, uh, also crucial and once you have that we should also look at uh, how the cells would be cultured and in case we are working with uh, stem cells how the cells would be differentiated, right. So, all these aspects are crucial when you are talking about uh, cells. So, the cell culture aspect is what we are going to be talking about. So, we will talk about uh, first harvesting the cells, selecting and isolating the cells, expanding or sculpturing the cells and differentiating the cells. So, these are the different aspects uh, of cell culture. So, uh, harvesting just means that taking cells from a tissue. So, it could be from different tissues. So, you just take out uh, the tissue of interest and uh, there could just be some simple mechanical digestion or some uh, simple treatment to uh, get a mixture of cells from the harvested tissue. That could be used as the cells itself, that mixture could be used as the cells itself. So, one example would be just using uh, platelet rich plasma or platelet poor plasma where uh, not much of uh, selection or anything is done. There is a little bit of uh, isolation being done, but it is primarily just harvesting and using it. You could also have a uh, selection which could be a lot more specific where you try to identify specific cell types which you are interested in and taking those cells and actually uh, using them for tissue engineering applications. It could either be in, in vitro or it could be directly uh, injected into a person for a regeneration of the tissue. Right. So, these are two options when you are talking about cell, exp uh, cell, exp uh, sorry, cell selection and uh, harvesting, but the cells you get is usually not of enough numbers. We did talk about this earlier, right. So, we need a lot of cells uh, and especially if you are going to take it from an autologous source, then you are not going to have enough number of cells. So, you would have to culture them. So, usually this is done in vitro so that you can get enough numbers. So, even if you are going to harvest 10 power 4 or 10 power 5 cells, you might need 10 power 8 or 10 power 10 uh, cells. So, you might have to multiply these cells over a period of time to get enough cells and then use it for uh, regeneration or tissue engineering. So, culturing the cells is a crucial aspect and this is going to be dependent on the type of cell you are working with, right. So, if you are going to use a uh, for example, if you are working with hepatocytes, the culture conditions would be different compared to what you would have for an epithelial cell, right. So, you need to know what culture conditions are and how you actually maintain these culture conditions, what are the growth media required and so on. So, if you are using stem cells, then obviously the expansion would also have to make sure that the stemness is maintained. So, in the sense that uh, as it is uh, dividing and multiplying, it should not differentiate, it should only multiply. So, that is a crucial aspect. If it starts multiplying, you will get enough numbers, then the stem cell has to be differentiated to get the specific cell type uh, for the application. So, the differentiation process itself will be different. So, you, how you direct the differentiation to get the desired cell type is also a challenge that needs to be understood and this will be different for different cell types. So, first thing is harvesting the cells. There are different methods and procedures. So, the method you use would depend on the cell source or the cell type itself. So, depending on the tissue which you are going to extract, you are going to use different uh, techniques, right. So, uh, most of these uh, cell harvesting techniques actually come from some type of a diagnostic procedure. So, there are different diagnostic procedures for uh, studying uh, for checking the pathology, checking some uh, disease condition. So, here tissues are taken for these studies. So, these techniques are used uh, for cell harvesting as well. So, th there is a high demand for patient safety because these procedures actually expose the patient towards uh, potential infections and so on. 
So, you need to make sure that uh, these are done in proper clinical environment and uh, you do not uh, cause any uh, complication to the patient. So, you need to maintain the correct uh, environment, the clean environment for doing this. So, special care for handling storage and transportation of these tissues is also required because uh, depending on the tissue type, you might have to store it under different conditions, right. So, you might have to store it in liquid nitrogen or you might have to uh, treat it as soon as you process it immediately and so on. So, depending or you might have to heparinize it if you are going to be using blood or citrated blood might be required. So, depending on what tissue you are working with and how you are going to use it in the future, you would have to uh, handle it and store it appropriately. So, one of the most common uh, sources for cells in tissue engineering is bone marrow aspirates because these contain the mesenchymal stem cells. So, uh, these are usually harvested under local anesthesia. People are given local anesthesia and uh, it is taken the bone marrow aspirates are taken from uh, the upper part of the hip which is the iliac crust. I mentioned this earlier as well. So, this is the iliac crust. So, you have the uh, you have the hip bone. So, what you see here this these are the iliac crusts. So, here uh, the bone is uh, sorry the bone contains the bone marrow and you can actually get a bone marrow aspirate from which you can get this mesenchymal stem cells. These can also be isolated from the sternum, sternum is what is in your rib gauge. So, the rib cage is actually connected by something called a sternum. So, that is what this tissue is, this bone is and tibia is a other bone in your leg. So, you actually uh, can harvest stem cells, uh, mesenchymal stem cells and bone marrow aspirates from these tissues. Okay. So, uh, iliac crust is the most common uh, tissue from where you try to harvest it. So, what you do is there is something called an aspirate needle. So, these are uh, large needles maybe 16 gauge or something and uh, these are penetrated into the skin and to the uh, and it also penetrates the outer part of the bone which is the hard bone and it reaches the softer central part which contains the bone marrow. So, this is a painful procedure right. So, that is why you have to have a local anesthesia. So, you are actually uh, causing a, a puncture through the skin through the uh, muscle tissue into the bone. So, it is going to be quite painful. And uh, from this softer part of this bone where the bone marrow is present, the marrow is sucked out using a heparinized syringe. Okay. So, why do you think we use heparinized syringe? What is the role of heparin? To prevent blood clotting. Yeah. So, these aspirates can actually clot very rapidly. So, to prevent that you need to use a heparinized syringe. Okay. So, uh, these Aspirates can will contain uh, hematopoietic cells, adipocytes, endothelial progenitor cells and uh, osteoprogenitor cells as well. So, if more than 2 ml is aspirated, then peripheral blood can actually dilute the mesenchymal stem cells. So, it is important to control how much you are aspirating and then whatever you are getting is now a mixture of cells and you might have to separate cells uh, to get the specific cell which you are looking for. So, another technique which is used is tissue biopsies. So, uh, tissues from any almost any organ can be biopsied. So, you basically just take a piece of the tissue, cut a piece of the tissue and use it for uh, your uh, cell isolation. So, there are different techniques for this. Uh, a scrape is basically a cells are removed from the surface of a tissue where you just take a, scra a scrape of the tissue or you can have something called a punch biopsy where a punch which is round shape is used to cut and remove a disc of tissue. So, this is like what you would see in a punch hole, right. So, you cause a create a small hole, a small punch and this uh, disc shaped tissue can be harvested and that can be processed further to get the desired uh, tissues, sorry desired cells. You can also have needle biopsy. So, here a needle is used to remove a sample. So, usually this is for liquid samples. So, it could be for the limb, for the uh, blood and so on. You have uh, stereotactic biopsy. Here a stereotactic system uh, which uses the 3D coordinates is used to identify a small target region and specifically remove tissues. So, these things are used in places where you need to have a lot more uh, control. For example, if you are going to take brain tissue and so on. So, you would not want to damage the organ. So, you need to have uh, precise control over which part of the tissue you are actually harvesting. So, for that reason you actually use something like stereotactic biopsy. Yeah. So, what are reasons for harvesting brain tissues? 
or you might want to work with brain cells right. So, there and you, there could also be reasons like uh, diagnostics for tumor and so on right. So, there are different reasons where you do biopsies. A colposcopic uh, biopsy is where a, col a colposcope is used uh, a, this is a close fo uh, focus telescope that allows the doctor to actually look at the cervix to uh, look at in detail. So, this is usually done for uh, again uh, diagnostic uh, di diagnosing cancer cervical cancer. Endoscopic biopsy is where an endoscope is used to collect the sample. An endoscope is basically a long thin lighted optical instrument which is used to get deep inside the body and it can also examine and operate uh, on organs ok. So, you might have seen endoscopy done through the nose or through the mouth uh, those are very commonly done ok. So, this is, this is just a long tube which is inserted into your body and so these are some of the different techniques which are available readily for uh, performing biopsies. So, uh, what I am showing here is the punch biopsy. So, this is one of the simplest things uh, done usually this is done for uh, tissues like skin which are easily uh, cut open. So, uh, what you do is under local anesthetic you take this punch tool which is a sharp knife which is round in shape and the punch is placed over the area which you want to harvest and it is pushed down and rotated to remove a uh, circular piece of the skin. The skin sample is then lifted with the forceps or a needle and uh, this can be cut uh, from the tissue for before it is further processed. So, biopsies for internal organs however, cannot be done with uh, very in a such a simple and crude way. You would need uh, more of a fluoroscopic control, uh, you would either combine it with the endoscope or an x-ray machine so that you actually can keep track of where you are going and what tissue you are uh, removing. So, on the tissue the biopsies you got or the aspirates you got basically are a mixture of cells right. So, you might have to process them further before you can use them for uh, tissue engineering applications. Bone marrow aspirates are basically suspensions. So, cell retrieval can actually be done uh, from these suspensions whereas, tissue biopsies have uh, extracellular matrix attached with it right. The cells are adhered to the ECM and you have actually taken out the uh, tissue. So, now you need to make sure that the ECM is removed before you start working with the cells. Okay, if you are only wanting the cells you do not need the ECM. So, this is the opposite of decellularization you need to remove the ECM without actually damaging the cells. So, the first step is usually mechanical. So, what you do is uh, you could either have a vortexing with digestion buffer or uh, just dicing with scalpel and so on. So, those are simple techniques to uh, try and remove as much of the ECM as possible. Uh, the disrupted biopsies could then be implanted or further processed or it could be placed in culture for expansion as well. So, what else do you think you can do for uh, further processing? So, the first step is just mechanical right. So, after that if you want to remove ECM what do you think you can do? Collagenase digestion. Collagenase or something. So, where you actually use some prote uh, protease some enzyme which could actually uh, disrupt the ECM and release the cells from this ECM. Okay. So, that would be one way to uh, do this. And trypsin could actually just uh, dislodge the cells from the ECM instead of destroying the ECM. Trypsinization actually makes sure that cells do not adhere to the surface they just come out of the ECM. Okay. So, there are different techniques which you can use. Okay. So, there can also be uh, calcium dependent uh, molecules being targeted which are what the which are used for uh, cell adhesion. So, you can use chelating agents that will actually target these uh, calcium dependent cell adhesion molecules and uh, help in the release of cells from the ECM. So, basically cell retrieval process uh, can be of two or three different steps. The first step is uh, mechanical homogenization where you can use sonication, manual pulverization or high speed uh, blending. Uh, this is usually done for soft tissues and uh, enzymatic digestion is done for soft and cartilaginous tissues where you use things like uh, collagenase, proteinase K and so on. Uh, acid digestion is done for osseous and fibrous tissues. So, uh, instead of using enzymatic digestion when you have uh, hard tissues you can use acid digestion. So, which is usually done using HCL. So, the harvested cells the cells which you have harvested 
actually contain uh, a mixture of cell types right because uh, you have not done anything to specifically attract one cell type whatever you have done till now you have just done mechanical characterization mechanical uh, isolation or enzymatic digestion which will just retrieve all the cells that are present in the tissue this would mean there is a mixture of cells but now you might want to use only one specific cell type so if you want hepatocytes alone then you would have to make sure that hepatocytes are separated so there are many techniques which can be used to enrich these cells so how you do this is dependent on uh, three major uh, factors it is based on adhesion properties of the cell or the morphology uh, of the cell which would include the density and size of the cell or it could be antibody binding and so on so the physiology of the cells and so on so use based on the distinct characteristics which are unique to a cell you try to uh, separate it from the other cells okay so the procedure can be either positive selection or negative selection what i mean by that is uh, in positive selection you try to isolate the target cell type from the entire population so you might have like 8 or 10 uh, cell types and you try to target one cell type and take that out of the mixture whereas the other thing is negative selection where you deplete all other cell types and only the target cells remain both uh, approaches are possible uh, both of them have their own advantages and disadvantages in positive cell types the advantage is uh, there is high purity because you have targeted one specific cell type you know for sure only that cell type is going to come there is going to be a unique property which you identify and you are going to use that to separate it so which means it's going to be highly pure it is not going to have any issues with purity uh, also the cells which you get can be further processed again and again for purification right because you are having one only one type of cells and even if a few other things are present with it if, if something if one of the techniques you have used is not very specific to one cell type and it can actually attract two cell types then what happens is you now again have a mixture and you can still further process it but the disadvantage is uh, you have actually used some uh, antibody or a labeling agent that uh, will attract the cell type of interest so your cell might actually have this attached to it and that could interfere in the further processing so if you are going to culture them or if you are going to use it in vivo this could actually be a problem yeah vasudha so have they tried using same media also yeah yeah so people do use that so we'll talk about that as well so th that is also possible people use selective media to uh, so just like how it, you would do it for transfected cells but that is primarily done for trans transfected cells without transfection the cells might not have that level of selectivity so in case of transfection you can have something like an antibiotic resistance and then you culture the cells in uh, the presence of the antibiotic every other cell will die and only the transfected cell will survive but uh, if you are talking about cells which are just isolated it's not very easy to do that so negative selection uh, the problem is it is very complex to design a cocktail which will actually remove everything except that cell you are uh, interested in it because you need to now target so many different cell types so it is actually a difficult process to do it because of this you would end up with something which is of lesser purity you may not be able to get the highly pure uh, mixture however the advantage is the cells will not have any of the antibodies or labeling agents after you do this okay so both these techniques can be used you would have to decide on what is of more interest to you what level of purity or whether uh, the cell should uh, not have any antibodies attached or so on so depending on what you are going to do with the cells and how you are going to process them you would choose negative or positive selection techniques so when you are trying to isolate a cell type from a mixture of cells you want to identify unique properties of the cell that uh, of that cell type and try to exploit that you want to identify something which is specific for that cell type so the choice of isolation technique uh, will depend on the cell type itself then so what do you think are the parameters that will actually govern the cho choice of isolation technique what do you think will affect how the cell isolation is done cell surface markers okay surface markers is one cell density okay size and geometry okay size and shape charge cell uh, cell surface charge okay the 
Okay, what do you mean by that? You mean the application or the product? Uh, okay, so what you are going to use the cells for? Okay. Anything else? Okay. So. Uh, okay. okay. So uh, pH resistance is one specific aspect, but uh, in general, what I would say. So, okay. So, uh, so depends on the so amount of stress which a cell can withstand, right? So you might ha have cells which can withstand uh, certain pH or certain uh, temperature or certain uh, shear, and you can only choose techniques which can handle that. So, for example, if you are going to use something like a centrifugation technique, uh, cells which cannot withstand shear cannot be used uh, separated using centrifugation. You are going to lyse too many cells. Right. So, uh, those are factors which you have to take into account. So, another thing is ultimately what do you want? You know, how pure and uh, of the cells do you want or are you focused on yield? Because you want to uh, uh, isolate as many cells as possible. Right. In some cases yield is more crucial than purity. You would want to ensure all the cells of the type are recovered, but it is okay if the purity is only 80 percent. So, you might want to use a technique which is suitable for that. So, again negative or positive selection which will depend on the application we are use and any other specific requirement which the application might have. Also you have to look at time and cost right. So, you, you cannot have a process which is too time consuming which is very low throughput and it is going to be very expensive. So, those things will not be the most attractive uh, options. So, you need to figure out things which are viable for uh, the specific application you are looking at. Okay. So, uh, the aspects like surface charge and uh, surface uh, markers would be the cellular characteristics which you are looking to use for isolation. So, surface charge and adhesion properties would be important uh, because these de uh, determine the extent of attachment to a surface and can be used to separate adherent cells from suspension cells. So, there are cells which are suspension cells as well, mammalian cells which can survive in suspension are there. So, these uh, suspension cells can be separated from adherent cells, right. So, what are these cells? Suspension cells. No, I mean mammalian cells which can survive under suspension. So, blood cells would be one, so all the immune cells are also uh, they can survive as suspension cells, cancer cells uh, can actually survive as suspension cells. There are uh, different cell types which can actually stem cells can actually survive as suspension cells. So, mesenchymal uh, stem cells are uh, anchorage dependent, but there are other adult stem cells uh, which are uh, unprogenitor cells which are actually uh, suspension cells. They can actually form some kind of uh, an aggregate and survive as an aggregate. So, we will talk about it. Okay. So, cell size and density is a parameter which can be used for separation. So, sedimentation, filtration or density gradient centrifugation are techniques which can be used for separating cells. So, these have been extensively studied and we, uh, we will use it very commonly. Cell morphology and physiology basically the shape, histological staining, media selective growth, uh, redox potential and other visual and behavioral properties of the cell can be used for identifying and isolating the cells. People have used many of these techniques uh, for getting specific cell types. So, last is the surface markers, it is uh, the most specific method. So, what you do is there is specific binding of a surface antigen either to the antibodies or to aptamers to selectively capture cells that have a specific surface phenotype. So, you try to attract cells which are specific or uh, which are of specific interest to you. So, people also, also work with uh, combination of these techniques. So, uh, instead of just using one method people try to use combinations thereby getting something which is much more pure. Right. So, uh, usually combinations would include one of the first three techniques, first three features and the last one. Okay. So, because the first three aspects are a lot 
cruder compared to the last one right the last one where you are trying to use surface markers is very specific and also highly sophisticated compared to the other three because if you are talking about just surface adhesion all you are doing is culturing cells right. So, you are separating adherent cells from non adherent cells it is quite simple and same goes for cell size and density filtration is a very simple process and so is uh, centrifugation. So, all you need is get a suspension of the cells and centrifuge it and you will be able to uh, get a gradient uh, centrifugation done and you will be able to separate the cells. So, uh, morphology again those things are also not too difficult to do these are reasonably simple to perform selective media and things like that are not too difficult to work, on, work with. Whereas, uh, surface markers can actually be quite tricky and quite tedious because uh, this is this requires a lot of information about the cell you are interested in and designing of proper antibodies and antigens choosing the correct molecules which can actually adhere to the cell you are talking about and using very sophisticated equipment like cell sorters which can actually use this to separate the cells. So, what people usually do is perform one of the first three options first and then perform the last one. So, that way you that way you do a combination and you get much higher uh, chance of getting much higher purity right. So, this is very commonly done for getting specific cell types. So, we will go into uh, some of the techniques. So, this is just an overview of all the techniques that are there and we will talk about individual techniques in greater detail. Uh, so, the first technique is the plastic adhesion which is based on the surface charge or surface adhesion properties. So, this can either be positive or negative selection. Uh, the purity is very low, but the yield is quite high because if you are trying to uh, separate all you are doing is uh, segregating it as two different classes adherent and non adherent cells right. So, every non adherent cell is going to be in the suspension every adherent cell is going to adhere to the surface. So, you are obviously going to get very high yield, but obviously the purity is going to be low because you are going to get a mixture of adherent cells and a mixture of non adherent cells. Density gradient centrifugation is uh, based on cell density and uh, this is a positive uh, selection for separation and uh, again the purity which you would get would be low because uh, your centrifugation is not going to make sure it is distinct separations and again many cells could have similar densities as well. So, you are going to have cell populations in certain regions. So, the purity is going to be low and the yield is going to be quite high because it in that particular region you are going to have cells all the cells of that particular density. Filtration is based on cell size, uh, it is a positive selection mechanism where you have low purity and high yield. Again everything which is larger than the filter pore size is going to be retained and uh, that is going to be a mixture of cells again right. So, you are not going to be able to get one particular cell type from that. Fax, max, aptamer binding are all uh, surface antigen binding techniques uh, which have very high purity and uh, the yield is actually not very high yield is low to medium. Uh, so, that is why you try to use the first technique uh, before this. So, that you make sure you collect all of the cells before you actually perform uh, further purification ok. So, if you were to perform the fax or max or something like that the cell sorter first then obviously, you are not going to have enough cells to work with. So, there can also be uh, selective growth media or culture where you use the physiology of the cells. So, usually this is negative uh, selection and uh, here the purity could be medium to high depending on what types of cells you are working with and what actually is the mechanism you are trying to use and yield could again be low to medium. So, LCM is actually a laser uh, based technique which is used for cutting of cells identifying cells and uh, isolating cells and uh, that is a uh, morphology based uh, technique and uh, this again uses positive uh, selection and the purity is high and the yield is low. Uh, with RBC rosetting and immuno LCM you are actually trying to use combinations here. So, RBC rosetting is the basically using the size and surface antigen whereas, LCM immuno LCM would be using morphology and surface antigen these will give you very high purity because obviously, you are using the surface antigens as the second technique. So, you are going to have very high purity 
yield will again be medium to low. Okay. So, these are the general techniques which have been extensively studied and we will talk about some of these techniques in greater detail and uh, some of them we will not discuss. Let us first look at the first um, criteria which is adhesion based isolation. So, as I said uh, there are two types of cells adherent cells and the suspension cells. Adherent cells basically require uh, a suitable surface on which they can attach in order to thrive. Uh, examples would be macrophages, fibroblasts and uh, mesenchymal stem cells. Suspension cells do not require an at attachment surface and can occur in suspension in the body. They are usually found in fluids like blood or lymph. Right? So, all your blood cells are uh, suspension cells, right? uh, they, they do not have to adhere to something to grow, they will survive in suspension. So, lymphocytes, granulocytes and other uh, lymphocytes, granulocytes and other immune cells um, are all examples of suspension cells. So, cancer cells which have actually lost the ability to be uh, adherent are also suspension cells. Okay. So, some cancer cells due to the mutations lose their ability to be uh, adherent. So, they do not have to be adherent, so they will be in suspension. So, those cells are also uh, suspension cells. So, uh, this technique has evolved as uh, the cell culture techniques have evolved. So, when cell culture was first done, people are using just Pyrex uh, glass flasks. So, uh, on which the cells would were they were trying to culture the cells, but this does not actually work because primary cells do not attach to glass surfaces. Glass surfaces are glass surfaces hydrophilic or hydrophobic. Okay, why do you think it is hydrophobic? Why do you think glass is hydrophobic? Uncoated glass is hydrophilic, it is not hydrophobic. Okay. So, uh, the glasses you see like what you wear or all the window glasses and all they are coated. So, that is why you have you see droplets standing there. Otherwise, water spreads very nicely. So, if you were to perform a contact angle study on a pure uh, glass, the uh, contact angle would be close to 0. So, it is a uh, clean surface would be very hydrophilic. Okay. So, but the cells do not like very hydrophilic surfaces as well. They do not like very hydrophobic or very hydrophilic, they like only something in between. So, because of this the primary cells do not adhere to uh, Pyrex glasses and also Pyrex glasses were actually too painful to maintain. Right? So, you have to actually sterilize them, you have to clean them, there is a lot of cost, it will get broken. So, it is very painful to deal with uh, glass uh, culture plates. So, in the 60s disposable uh, polystyrene based uh, culture plates were uh, brought in and people started using them more commonly. Uh, they provided the same optical clarity as glass. Uh, but they were more malleable and easy to sterilize. So, you could, so these were advantages uh, to use them, but the problem was uh, they could not actually solve the cell adhesion issue because this was highly hydrophobic. So, your polystyrene is highly hydrophobic. So, because of this it would not cells would not adhere. So, then people started looking at surface modification of these uh, cell culture plates and uh, first thing which they tried was simple oxidation using ozone or sulfuric acid and uh, potassium hydroxide, hydrochloric acid and so on. So, uh, these due to this oxidation what would happen is there is a positively charged surface. The cell surface has is negatively charged because of this and proteins are negatively charged and so on. So, all these things because of this they will adhere and once they start adhering they will start growing. So, that is what was uh, tried out as the first surface modification. So, then people are started coating ECM proteins. So, protein, proteins like uh, collagen, fibronectin, chondroitin sulphate have all been coated on these, uh, surf, on these uh, culture plates to make sure that cells will adhere very nicely and these plates are actually very effective. So, another technique which is being uh, studied is also to use polylysine to provide a positively charged surface. Again that will help in oh, the negatively charged cells to adhere. So, these techniques have actually improved cell adhesion properties and now culture plates are very effective for cell adhesion. Uh, cells will adhere very nicely on culture plates and they will grow without much of a problem. Now that people have evolved with the cell culture techniques itself, the adhesion based uh, isolation could also be evolved. 
So, uh, for example, if you want to isolate macrophages which are adherent cells, what you do is uh, you take either bone marrow or peripheral blood and uh, the mixture of cells are seeded on these polystyrene plates with serum. So, the monocyte and macrocyte and uh, monocyte or macrophage differentiation cytokine cocktail is also given that is the media which is supplied for the cells to grow. After 5 to 7 days, the cells will differentiate and form an adherent monolayer while the unwanted cells uh, remain in the suspension and are discarded. So, uh, whatever bone marrow you had like the stem cells you had in the bone marrow or the peripheral blood would have converted to form macrophages because of the differentiation cocktail, the cytokine cocktail and then you have only the macrophages which are adhered to the surface. Everything else will be in suspension because the others are all blood cells right, so they are not going to adhere. So, this way you can get macrophages with reasonable purity. If you are looking at adhering uh, isolating suspension cells, what you do is you culture it in ultra low attachment plates in the absence of serum. So, now these plates uh, could either be very hydrophobic or very hydrophilic and they will not support cell adhesion at all. So, what happens is the cells which can actually survive as single cell suspensions or uh, uh, aggregates in suspension will survive, other cells will not have any place to adhere and they will die. So, you will get all the suspension cells uh, only, all the adherent cells would have been killed off. So, this technique. Uh, is specifically used for isolation of macrophages and uh, adult stem cells and progenitor cells from differentiated ce uh, cells and for isolation of cancer stem cells. Okay. So, for these applications people have used uh, cell adhesion based isolation. The advantage is it is a simple procedure which is reproducible and cost effective, but the limitation is the purity of the recovered cells is low because obviously you are getting a mixture of cells which could adhere or which could be in suspension and you will get only that. And there is also a risk of cross contamination anytime you are actually performing cell culture there is a risk of contamination right. Contamination is one of the major challenges when you are talking about cell culture. So, because of this that could also happen you could always have some bacterial uh, contamination or fungal contamination which will completely spoil your cultures. So, that is a problem. So, because of these advantages, because of these disadvantages of low purity, people have looked at other techniques which are more specific to if you are specific, if you are looking at getting a specific cell type, right. So, you cannot always purchase cells, right. You would have to isolate cells from primary, uh, isolate primary cells from tissues. So, when you have to do that, you would have to perform different studies.